Wednesday, October 1st, reaching its peak illumination at 4.05 p.m. And one thing that sets the harvest moon apart from other full moon names is that it's not associated with a specific month as the others are. Instead, the harvest moon relates to the timing of the autumnal equinox with the full moon that occurs nearest to the equinox being the one to take on the name harvest moon. So we can expect the harvest moon to come on Thursday. In the meantime, speaking of harvesting, it is time for Tammy Perez to start reaping and planting another pathway. She loves pathways so much that she's starting on another one. She's on level one of the motivational pathway, and she looks forward to learning new ways to present, which makes so much sense because she is an amazing educator. So here she is going to present her new on her new pathways. Please help welcome none other than Mrs. Tammy Perez to the virtual thing that I forget the name of. Lectern, but thank you. <laughs> Lectern. Thank you, Andrea, for that wonderful introduction. I sincerely appreciate it. I have myriad ways to talk about harvesting tonight. However, I will actually be focusing on leadership and leadership skills. Tonight, what I would like to talk to you about is something that has formed me as an individual. So this is the icebreaker speech for me for this new level. And <clears throat> I've talked to you all about many things throughout our time together. And you know that I'm an educator. You also know that I'm a leader, but I don't know that I've really talked to you about what has made me a leader. There are two organizations in particular that I feel are very important for young individuals to go into to form their leadership skills. The one that really helped me out a lot was 4-H. I grew up on a farm, so I know a lot about harvesting, but I also had a lot of animals. And so I had a dog in 4-H throughout four full years. This taught me responsibility. It taught me accountability because by golly, when I went into a meeting and I was trying to have him do what he's supposed to be doing, if he didn't do it, that wasn't his fault. That was my fault because I didn't train him well enough. It taught me also flexibility and empathy. I was in 4-H for four years with him. We went from learning how to sit, how to lay down, how to come, how to fetch, and then by the fourth year, he knew how to do all of that. And he could do it all by hand signals. He could be 50 feet away from me fetching something and I would just use my hand to tell him to go down and he would go down. And I would call him to me and halfway I would tell him to stop, lay down, stay. He was amazing. This dog loved me and he would do anything for me, but I always knew that I was never gonna get first place in 4-H at the fair. And the reason behind that was he couldn't sit down. He was run over when he was six months old by a tractor and he'd had more surgeries than anybody can ever imagine a dog having. And so his hip hurt, it broke his hip. And we had surgery after surgery to fix it, but it always seeped because those stri the stitches, he was allergic to them. So even in my fourth year with him, where he did absolutely everything perfectly, he couldn't sit straight and I got second place out of two. <laughs> and I had to learn to give him that grace and to accept that he was giving me his best work, even though I was never going to get first place with him. He was amazing. He was a, uh, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, by the way. They are amazing dogs. The other organization that I wanted to talk to you about is Girl Scouts. When my daughter was born, I wanted to make sure that she knew also about leadership skills, that she developed those skills herself through a lot of hands-on activities. We got into Girl Scouts when she was very young. 
She learned how to prepare for camping, how to prepare for events. She learned organizational skills. She also learned accountability. She developed relationship skills and camaraderie. She learned how to get over having an argument with somebody and how to get past that, basically. She learned the value of community service and volunteering. She was able to implement team working skills as well. She was uh, one of the, she basically learned how to manage an entire uh, campground so that she could plan the meals and have other individuals, others of her, of her uh, Girl Scouts to help her with planning the, the, what they were going to eat and who was gonna eat and who was gonna clean up. At the end all of all of it, I wanna say that she had a lot of grit, that that's what she developed was a lot of grit. I'm gonna give you a quote here about grit. To be gritty is to keep putting one foot in front of the other. It's to hold fast to an interesting and purposeful goal. To be gritty is to invest day after week after year in challenging practice. To be gritty is to fall down seven times and rise up eight. These two organizations taught first me and then my daughter how to have grit, how to be able to fail, but then to be able to get back up again and move forward and to be successful and to be a leader. So these two organizations throughout my life have really taught both my daughter and me how to be a leader right from the very beginning, from the time that we were very, very young. I wanna give you one more quote, and this one is by Bethany Hamilton. She says, courage, sacrifice, determination, commitment, toughness, heart, talent, and guts. That's what little girls are made of, the heck with sugar and spice. And that's something that I think is so important as we teach our children how to be leaders. Thank you. I am always so interested in hearing from Tammy, the Dean for Academic Success at Northeast Lakeview College, because she always drops a, some wisdom on us. And uh, I'm really looking forward to listening to the rest of your speeches for your motivational pathway. Well, before we move on to our next speaker, I just wanted to ask you, did you ever participate in apple picking when you were younger? Do you remember the changing of the leaves as the weather got cooler and you started to change from your shorts to your pants and your, your t-shirts to just a light jacket? Well, that's not happening here, but that's okay because we're in... <laughs> Because we're going to enjoy these warmer, this warmer temperature anyway, and eventually we will get there, just maybe not in the next couple of days. But fall is here, and it is time to hear about everyone's craze over pumpkin spice latte with that, which I personally hate with the passion of a thousand burning sun. But maybe you like it, and maybe that's your thing, and you are in the right season to be. So... Now we can move on to marketing agency CEO, Shankar Ponsole, who has a myriad of expertise and topics to, nope, that's wrong, that's okay. In any case, he's an incredible speaker who hasn't given me his topic because he has no idea probably what he's going to speak of but it's always very challenging and it is sometimes technical, but he finds ways to break down, especially marketing information about lead generations or conversions and customer success and brand awareness, best practices of SEO or search engine optimization. I mean, he can go on and on about marketing. So I'm sure that he has a speech up his sleeve that pertains to something in the digital world. If not, 
Also, hello. Oh, Joko, we can see your face now. Excellent. How beautiful you are. Okay, now I can see your expressions as you hear my crazy harvest ramblings. Excellent. Shankar, why don't we go ahead and cut off my ramblings, cut them short, and you can go ahead and give your speech to Texas Tri-County. Chamber of Commerce, Toastmasters. Thank you, Andrea. My dear friends, it is about business, but probably not in the way you are expecting. I am sure sometimes you have these moments in life where myriad expressions befall you and they make you think about topics all weekend long. And I have had such a weekend. It started off with an amazing encounter with a gentleman that teaches social contracts to organizations and individuals on Friday. And then it was followed by a movie that was unexpectedly deep called Antebellum. I was expecting a horror movie, but it turned out to be a very deep social commentary that addressed a lot of racial issues. As you know, I am in a relationship with a black woman and whenever we watch these types of movies, they bring up a lot of deep emotions and conversations that I didn't have to face before that relationship because I was literally not impacted by this topic. But now when I watch it, I see a person be heavily saddened and I have to deal with it. So these two experiences that I had at the end of the week really made me think about what does that mean for society and what does that mean for leading a business? And I started to understanding not just in that one weekend, but in the culmination of all of the conversations and of the input I've had over the past months, I started to understanding that it's really about differences that we recognize and accept within each other as people and as elements in business. Race, I have come, or racism, I have come to understand, is not so much about skin color. That is just an identifying outside factor. Racism is about differences that we have and feel and that we do not understand. Differences can be seen in age, ageism. Differences can be seen in gender sexism, differences can be seen in species, speciesism. It's okay to eat the pig, it's not okay to eat the horse. Racism can be seen in religion. It's okay to be a Christian, but it's not okay in certain parts of the world to be Muslim. And what we really need to understand is that we don't understand the differences. We are uncomfortable with the differences. And this is where the social contract comes in play that Eric Anderson spoke of, the gentleman that I met on Friday. If we as individuals or business owners can come together and say, okay, here is who I am. Here is who you are. What are our differences? And what do we need to convey to each other so that we feel respected in our differences? If we can have that conversation, that is very, very powerful. The question is easy. What do I need to do so that you feel respected? And then I listen. It may not be what you expect. In return, I can now ask, to experience behavior that makes me feel expected. 
One other element about racism that I think was very important to note is that the differences depend on how you perceive yourself, how you see yourself as different. Do you know that a lot of people refer to me as non-white, but I feel the whitest ever. These differences, however, have only come to light here in the United States. Because where I come from in Europe, the circumstances did not afford for the difference to matter. And here it does. Very, very important insight. So as I go and talk to my customers, my employees, and the target audiences I work for, I try to understand what makes these people feel respected what makes these people feel hurt. And when I have that identified, bringing it back to marketing and business leadership now, then I need to make a true, honest move so that I can show that I am really serious about respecting. I can give you an example. One of the changes that I had to apply in my business recently is afford more flexibility to my employees. They were telling me, man, it's time for a hybrid model. We want to work remotely. We want to work flexible hours. And I was afraid of that because it is a difference that I was not familiar with. But as soon as I saw their side of things, and I agreed to it. The concerned people started bringing much better work to light. It's a win-win situation. And I hope you will take away something from this speech and apply it to your lives, dear Toastmasters and guests. It is a wonderful formula, simple, but it will bring myriad advantages to your lives and businesses. Shankar Ponsole, ladies and gentlemen. Shankar, you never cease to impress me with how much you're able to expand your mind. It is, it is true that in my community and my family and friends, people do always ask, wait, Shankar is not white. What is he? Or he's, he's right in something else and to be honest there has been a lot of reaping and sowing planting harvesting because these conversations have taken the course of a year and some change to go through so there's a lot of seeds planted and i just appreciate you as a human being we at shanks appreciate your flexibility and we respect you for making these true and honest moves about respect and fostering an environment where you can experience that kind of behavior that really drives respect. So with this, we are now going to get a timers report from our timer, Craig Sprout. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Tammy's speech was an icebreaker, so that was four to six minutes and she hit the mark at six minutes and four seconds. Shankar, I just put you down for five to seven and you came in at six minutes, 57 seconds. 